All right, guys, tomorrow is the big day. We got NVIDIA's earnings. Drop me a comment below. How many shares do you plan on holding of NVIDIA going into earnings? Are you going to have a big position, medium size, small, or no position at all? I'm curious to know, guys, so drop me a comment really quick. I plan on going into the earnings with a light position, okay? So I'm playing it heavily before earnings. So I played it. You remember Friday, it dipped to 124. I was saying bye, 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 right? Went back up to 128, 129. I was selling in there. It actually went up to 130, and then it pulled back again. So I sold on Monday, and then it pulled back again this morning. We know to 124 again, so I reloaded again and wrote it back up, and I have a little bit still to sell at 129, 130, same thing. Okay, but I will just have a small position going into earnings and I'll react to what happens. And obviously, if they have a huge beat and raise report, then I'll decide hopefully I can catch a dip or, or get in right away after I see it because I'll be staring at it immediately when that earnings report is dropped. But just know this remember, we want to hope for the best, plan for the worst. Okay, I do predict again, prediction isn't good, we're going to react, but I have my gut is telling me, I should say that they're going to beat and raise and the stock is initially going to jump, okay? Now, it could pull back immediately after that. Depends on the conference call. Remember that sometimes the stock will shoot up initially on earnings and then when the conference call comes, if they say anything bad or about Blackwell, right, about the delay, that could send the stock down. So I could see something like that happening, okay? But overall, you got to give NVIDIA the benefit of the doubt because they have time and time again proved everybody wrong. So I wouldn't bet against them. That's where my head's at, Okay. But just know if they miss on anything, guys, then especially if they miss just this quarter's numbers, because everyone expects obviously a beat and raise. So if they miss on revenue or earnings, then the stock's going to fall and the AI trade's going to be over for a little bit, guys. Okay. So all these AI stocks, right? Semiconductors are going to take a break. They're going to dip if that happens. I'm just saying you got to plan for the worst, right? But of course, hope for the best. I expect them to beat and raise and that this rally. It could be an everything rally. That's what I'm hoping, that we know the broadening out has happened. And I hope to see a beat and raise and then everything's green in the market where everyone's making money. So give me that green dollar sign emoji tongue, right? Let's hope we all see that Wednesday and let's just have a boom, right? Going into this first interest rate cut. And like I said, through the end of the year, I really do see a nice rally happening. Of course, you can't time when the dips are gonna happen, but always expect those, right? Nothing goes straight up. Okay, but this is should be a healthy rally. We have a really nice setup with this AI boom taking place with an interest rate cut. The consumer's holding up all right so far, right? Unemployment I know is ticking up, but it's still reasonable. We're just back at pre-pandemic levels. So I think this rally can continue, but we'll see what happens, okay? Again, don't try to predict, react to what happens. And then also a couple other names I wanna talk about is Affirm because they're interest rate sensitive. The stock's been beaten up. And supposedly they're going to get the profitability quicker than people think. And as long as they beat and raise, which they have the last five quarters straight, guys. So that's why I like this setup going in with the stock price low. Okay, this could shoot up nicely if they can beat. And it looks like it's starting to break out already out of this, you know, descending trend or sorry, downward trend line. So a firm's one, again, that's might be overshadowed by NVIDIA's earnings, obviously, tomorrow because it's after market close tomorrow as well. Um, also, right, CrowdStrike and Salesforce are tomorrow. So we'll see what happens with those. Again, Salesforce is a pretty reliable cash flow, you know, king out there. And I think that company is going to be fine if you're holding that long. All right. But we'll see what Mark Benioff says on the conference call, right? You always got to watch for the conference call. So if you do get that big rip before the conference call, for example, with NVIDIA, maybe you want to hedge some, okay? Take some off the table because like I said, the conference call can easily change right? Depending on what is said by management. But anyways, a firm, we had Semtech today, which beat on their earnings that all their metrics, like their profit margins, their numbers were increasing and their guidance was raised. So that was good. That stock shot up. That's one I recommended. And it should continue to go up because of NVIDIA, especially if they beat and raise, Semtech could have a heck of a week. Okay. So I like that play. Again, see if you can catch it on a little pullback. It went over 40 bucks a share in after hours with, with that earnings report. Um, and then, like I said, you got Ulta and Lululemon on Thursday, but we'll take it one day at a time tomorrow. Let's hope NVIDIA okay, can beat and raise the stock can go up. And remember, we got that contest. Again, I'm going to go back to the original video. Remember, you had to put the comment there of what you thought the stock price was going to be at market close 
before earnings. So tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time, I'll be taking that closing price and whoever's closest to that gets that $10 Starbucks gift card. So I'll let you know who wins it, guys. It'll be a fun day. Let's see what happens. Let's make some money.